In 1963, a quarter of a million people marched in Washington demanding racial equality and freedom. At the time, it was the largest civil rights demonstration in U.S. history. I have a dream. During the march, civil rights champion Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his I Have a Dream speech advocating racial harmony. When all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, Civil rights activist A. Philip Randolph organized the march. Randolph and King are among dozens of civil rights leaders showcased in a new exhibit at the National Portrait Gallery in Washington, D.C. The exhibit features over 40 paintings, photographs, and sculptures of key figures from the 19th and 20th century who fought to empower African Americans, women, Native Americans, gays and lesbians, and the disabled. There are photographs of slavery abolitionist Frederick Douglass and educator Booker T. Washington, seated at center, who rose from slavery to become one of the most important African-American leaders of his time. Sociologist and historian W.E.B. Du Bois, shown here in a pastel portrait, is best known for his groundbreaking book, The Souls of Black Folk, which described what it was like to be African-American at the turn of the 20th century. It is still read by students, black and white, across America. Sidney Hart is a senior historian at the National Portrait Gallery. He says, unlike Booker T. Washington, who advocated accommodation, Du Bois called for immediate civil and political rights for African Americans. These two kind of represent opposite uh, branches of, of the African-American struggle for civil rights, two of the most important characters. Du Bois, the Harvard-educated, cosmopolitan, cerebral thinker, uh, Washington born a slave and working himself up. Um, so I, we, we wanted both those in the exhibit to, to represent the two, two opposite poles of civil rights. Rosa Parks also figures in the exhibit. In 1955, she was arrested when she refused to give her seat to a white male bus rider in Montgomery, Alabama. This sparked a boycott of the city's bus system. The following year, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that laws requiring segregation on buses were unconstitutional. Cesar Chavez, a Mexican-American farm worker, led a series of protests in the 1960s against the unfair treatment of migrant workers. He co-founded the United Farm Workers, UFW. It launched a nationwide boycott of California grapes to improve conditions for grape pickers. Chavez and Dolores Huerta, his co-founder, are commemorated in a painting along with other prominent activists. In the American Indian Movement, or AIM, Leonard Crow Dog is regarded by many as the spiritual leader. Crow Dog is also featured in the show. Frank Goodyear, associate curator of photographs, says Crow Dog not only advocated demonstrations to promote Native American rights, he also encouraged Native Americans to re-engage with their traditions. He suggested the importance of Native Americans looking back to their heritage, to their uh, traditions, uh, and finding strength in, in that history. In 1920, American women gained the right to vote. Lucretia Mott, Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony on the right, and Carrie Chapman Catt led the struggle. Their efforts led to the passage of the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, guaranteeing a woman's right to vote. The heroic individuals showcased in this exhibit fought hard to achieve justice and equality for their fellow Americans. They are remembered not only for the battles they waged, but for the groundwork they laid for struggles that remain to be won. Julie Tabo, VOA News, Washington.